Sure, there are a lot of emotions kicking around in this room today. I've perceived anger and outrage and subdued somberness. The one I feel overwhelmingly is sadness. Uh, we've heard nothing but terribly disturbing evidence of what has happened to our country at the hands of arguably our greatest adversary. And what's worse, the evidence we've heard so far all seems, all seems to lead to the conclusion that they had help from the inside, that this was in part an inside job from U.S. persons, willing American accomplishments, accomplices, or terribly naive ones, or probably both, who helped the Russians attack our country and our democracy. We're both still at the early stages of our investigation. We're not indicting anyone. We're merely laying out some of the evidence and the facts, dirty though they be, sleazy though they be. And no matter what, we can safely conclude at this point that never in the modern era has a president and his administration had so many foreign entanglements, entanglements that continue to push American foreign policy away from its core roots, beliefs, interests, and alliances towards unprecedented positions that only Putin himself could approve of. How else can we explain the modification to the Republican Party platform in such a decidedly pro-Russian way? Republicans who are always so strong against geopolitical foes like Russia. I know my colleagues on this committee take the Russia threat very seriously. Why wouldn't the people who inhabit the White House? How else can we explain an administration that beats up our oldest allies like Australia and Britain and our strongest and most sacrosanct alliance like NATO, but never, ever say a bad word about Putin? In fact, they say a lot of good words about Putin. An administration that we have heard decisively makes up baseless wiretapping charges against a former United States president, equates our intelligence agencies to Nazi Germany, and argues moral equivalence between a repressive authoritarian states with an abhorrent human rights record like Russia and our free and open democracy. And yet, this administration never, ever utters any criticism of Russia. Let's be clear, though. This is not about party. It's not about relitigating the election. It's not as if anything we do here will put a president from a different political party in the Oval Office. So I hope that it's clear that it's about something much more important. And no, it's not about political motivation, to my friend who said and suggested that earlier. This is about patriotism, about something way more important than party. This is about country and the very heart of what this country is built on which is open, free, fair, trusted elections. We don't take our investigation lightly, and I know you don't. Indeed, you go through a process to even decide to do that, whether to expend the resources to begin with credible allegations and reason to believe that there is something that warrants it. And I no doubt believe that you have talked to lawyers in and out of the prosecution prosecution divisions about whether or not this warrants an investigation. I know you don't take this lightly. But what we have seen is damning evidence today of what Russia did. We've also seen damning evidence of how they did it. Russia has a history of using active measures, many of which we have heard about today. Let's recap them. We're getting near the end. Hacking and dumping information to damage or embarrass their enemies. We heard about this, of course, with respect to WikiLeaks and Guccifer 2.0. Using third parties and cutouts, business people, oligarchs, and other ostensibly private individuals to cultivate relationships. We've discussed Ambassador Sergei Kislyak, Rosneft CEO Igor Sechin, and, of course, Vladimir Putin himself. We've also heard about Russia's use of companies like Gazprom, the Bank of Cyprus, Rosneft, Rosneft and a confusing web of offshore shell companies used, it would seem, to hide or to launder money. We've also heard how Russia released disinformation to spread rumors and confuse the public and sow distrust in the ability to even know truth objectively, using propaganda media outlets, 
whether directly owned by Russia or not, to release such disinformation in order to claim plausible deniability of Russia's hands. Here again, we see WikiLeaks and Guccifer 2.0, but we also see the use of propaganda outlets like RT. And, of course, the use of U.S. persons of influence, whether through active collusion or coordination or naive acquiescence, we don't yet know the full extent to further Russia's attempts to undermine our elections and ultimately weaken our democracy. On that last point, we've heard about quite a few individuals in the Trump orbit who fell somewhere on that spectrum from mere naivete, disturbing enough if this naivete is a feature of those who are supposed to be running our country in foreign policy, to unwitting Russian dupes, to willing blindness to active coordination. This rogues galleries includes those already fired, Roger Stone, advise, advisor to Donald Trump, Paul Manafort, advisor to Donald Trump, Michael Flynn, national security advisor to Donald Trump, Carter Page, advisor to Donald Trump. But the cloud of deep suspicion and Russian entanglements extends to those still in power. Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State to Donald Trump. Michael Caputo, advisor to Donald Trump. Jeff Sessions, Attorney General for Donald Trump, and members of the Trump family itself. This matters. It's serious. Our battleships weren't sunk and our towers didn't collapse a la 2011. But make no mistake, 2016 is a year that we should mark on our calendars. And it's still going on. The attack didn't end on Election Day. And it will continue, as you have suggested, unless we, all of us in this room, stop it. Admiral Rogers, you've proudly worn that uniform your entire career. I am proud of your service and grateful for it. But I would, I would ask you, sir, not even with respect to this specific invest, investigation, to use your own words as someone who no doubt has been in theater, who's lost brothers and sisters in combat, to explain to me, but more importantly to the American people. Don't assume they know the answer. Tell them in your words why we should care about Russia's active measures campaign aimed at destabilizing our democracy and that of our allies. In your words, sir, why should they care? I don't think it's in the best interest of our nation for any external entity to attempt to ma manipulate outcomes, to shape choices. That should be the inherent role of, de of a democracy. The investigation we're going through, I think, is a positive in the sense that it'll help illuminate to all of us, regardless of party, what are the implications here and what does it mean for us? Because I think our conclusion and that of the intelligence community broadly here is this, absent some change, this behavior is not likely to stop. Absent some change in the dynamic, this is not likely to be the last time we'll be having these discussions about this kind of activity. And I don't think that's in anybody's best interest for us as a nation. Director Comey, parallel question. Uh, Again, in general terms, and not with respect to the specific investigation you have revealed here today. Not asking you to go into specifics on any individuals. But please, explain, explain briefly to me, and more importantly to the American public, why we should care about Russia's use of U.S. persons, of Americans, helping Russia destabilize our democracy. <clears throat> well, like Admiral Rogers, I, I truly believe we are a shining city on a hill, to quote a great American, and one of the things we radiate to the world is the importance of our wonderful, often messy, but free and fair democratic system and the elections that undergird it. And so when there's an effort by a foreign nation state to mess with that, to destroy that, to corrupt that, it's very, very serious, threatens what is America. And if any Americans are part of that effort, it's a very serious matter. And so you would expect the FBI to want to understand, is that so? And if so, who did what? But again, I want to be very careful that people don't overinterpret my words to preserve our ability to answer those questions. 
We're not talking about our work. I'm not here voluntarily, right? I would rather not be talking about this at all, but, but we thought it was important to share at least that much with the committee and the American people, and now we're gonna close our mouths and do our work to see if we can answer those questions, because the answers matter. They do indeed. I thank you both for those answers, and I thank you both for your service to our country. I would like to think that we can turn this from a sad event into a positive one. This country has stood up and fought on behalf of its own health and welfare and that of its citizens and met any number of challenges throughout our nation's history. The worst thing we could do is underestimate the nature of this challenge before us today. With that, Ranking Member, I would appreciate it if I could yield to my friend from Texas, Mr. Castro, briefly. Mr. Castro. Uh, 